Hello, this is Bern, and if you're a single woman who's having a very difficult time entering a relationship that lasts, on today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you why relationships this day and age don't seem to last and what you can do about it starting today. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to your greatlifetv.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, heart-centered, and successful women how you can create the relationship of your dreams and attract the quality man you want without the need for gimmicks or manipulation and as a direct result of how you're showing up and your connection to your greatness and your feminine energy. Now, this day and age, I have encountered lots of women who reach out to me for help, letting me know that no matter how hard they try, how many guys they date, how different they do things, they still can't find a relationship that lasts a long time. And what they're seeking is marriage, which is basically a relationship that lasts ideally for the rest of your life. So I'm gonna talk about two different groups of women and tell you why it's difficult for both of those groups of women on both extremes to find a relationship that lasts, fully knowing that it's not just these two groups of women. There's lots of women in between this left and right uh, hemisphere uh, that I'll be sharing with you right now, but you can place yourself, situate yourself somewhere on the spectrum and, and figure out how this works for you. On this side of the spectrum, you have women who have grown up to believe that no one deserves them, that there's, no, there's not a single guy out there that they've met, that they've come in contact with, who actually has what it takes to be awesome enough for them. So it's the, the, the thought process for them would be like, the world doesn't deserve me. I am better than anyone I've met and no one can reach not, no one can reach me. And even though that's not true, it's a defense mechanism to protect yourself from getting hurt. I'm not saying that all the guys are a fit for them, but to say that no one is a fit for you, there's something inside that is wrong, that is not working right now, if that's the way you think. And when lo and behold, they catch themselves knowing and figuring out the guy's not perfect, it breaks their bubble and they decide to end it right then and there because they shouldn't be having that level of problem, that type of problem, or the guy should know better, right? So that's one end of the spectrum. The other spectrum, you have women who have lowered their self-esteem and they have a lowered sense of worth and act, connect with men who are emotionally distant or emotionally abusive, physically abusive, uh, who neglect them, who mistreat them in, in multiple ways, and they stay with that guy for, for longer than they need to. On both scenarios, this side of the spectrum it doesn't last because, well, you don't even give it a chance. On this side of the spectrum, it can't last as long as it needs to. Why? Because low, sooner or later, you get so fed up and then you close the door and you never open it again to that guy and with good reason. So I'm going to be talking about right now three different qualities, characteristics, uh, embodiments that, that are incredibly important. If you are someone who's saying, I want to have a relationship that is for the rest of my life, here's what it really takes. The first sphere is the, the balance, the artful balance between giving and receiving. What does that mean? That means that if you enter a relationship and you mostly want to receive, you're going to be hitting a brick wall because no one is going to stay with you just giving and not receiving. If you enter a relationship to give and you never receive, then same thing will happen. You will get tired of it. So what is the key? What is the answer to this? Well, the answer that I found that's most resonant with relationships that last is you enter a relationship primarily to give, not to receive, with 100% owning of the giving. And you choose a partner who's willing to do the same. You choose a partner who's willing to say, I'm going to enter this relationship primarily to give. 100% is my responsibility. If both of you are at a 100 level of responsibility, not 50-50, 100%, then that's going to be a magical relationship because even if you fall a little bit, you, you fall to 70%. Shit, that person's still, I mean, like it's still an amazing relationship. Few people do it. Most people enter a relationship, not even with a 50-50, with a 49-51 scenario where you're going to give 49, you're going to get 51, you have to get a little bit more than you're giving, right? And that is the wrong approach because the, the focus becomes what am I not receiving instead of what am I not giving? And then it shatters. Now, am I saying that you should just give without receiving? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you should do the best you can to give and the person that you're with should have the same commitment. Now, second sphere that's incredibly important to balance and to master is the art of compromise. Why is it important? 
Because if you enter a relationship thinking that you will not have to compromise, then that's going to be a relationship that fails. Because relationship is compromise. Because you are two distinct human beings with different values, however similar they are, with different wants, however similar they are, and with different personalities, however similar they might be. So you enter a relationship, and the key in compromise is understanding when you're drawing a line past which you're becoming a human being that you don't like. Because when you compromise on things that are important to you for the sake of your partner, and that person is going to do the same thing with you, and you find a way to make it work, then that's a relationship that can be sustained through many years. Now, when you're compromising on things that you feel are fundamentally against who you are, then that's a relationship that's going to be broken. That's a relationship that's going to be resentful. That's a relationship where at sooner or later, you're going to charge those uh, down payments that you've been giving emotionally with a lot of interest and the other person's not going to like it. Third sphere that's incredibly important and why many relationships don't last, my dear. And here's a big one. So please, if you listen to nothing else I say today but this, please listen to this one. Because most people right now have not been taught that sacrifice is an important principle in relationships. Because we live in a society that's prim primarily about me, my needs, my wants, my fulfillment, my orgasm, my everything, me, me, me. And to think that I have to give more than I can sometimes, more than I feel I'm capable of, is unthinkable in today's society. Because you've been taught that you should show up and you should get what you want and that you can do a little bit and get a lot. And that how, how, how you can, can you get the most ROI on your investment of time with your partner? Not that there's anything wrong with thinking about optimizing the way you act, but when you enter a relationship without the knowledge that you have to sacrifice, you will not survive that relationship. Here's why. Because they're sacrificing saying, I choose one person to have sex with for the rest of my life. If you're into monogamous marriage, that's the sacrifice you're, you're basically saying. That of all the potential partners out there, of all the potential excitement, of all the potential fulfillment, of all the potential different newness out there, I choose one human being to commit to for the rest of my life. It is a sacrifice to say that there's no sacrifice in staying, connecting with someone, when what you want to do is shout or what you want to do is run away. It's, it's nonsense. There is sacrifice in staying in a room and resolving something that is very complex to solve. There is sacrifice in having a family and your children and your man asking things of you that you feel are not even inside of you to give and still figuring out a way how you can do it and have more for yourself. There is sacrifice in finding a solution to that. There's sacrifice in making things work when, they, when the easiest thing to do is to throw in the towel. They're sacrificing figuring out a creative solution that works for both of you. To love someone with all your heart and passion and, and know that they will suffer and sometimes when they suffer, you suffer as a result of it. That sacrifice as well. So here's why this is important. We're, here's why I'm talking about this in this video in a nuanced way. Because the principles themselves are only as powerful as the partner you choose. Because if you're into giving and you follow the principle that I gave to you, give, focus 100% of your relationship in giving, knowing that the other person is going to do the same thing, compromise and sacrifice. If you do these things with the wrong partner, your life will become shit. Your life will become an overwhelming hell that you can't even think of how to get out of. Why? Because if you compromise for the wrong reasons and with the wrong person and you sacrifice who you are, and you get more pain instead of getting more fulfillment or growing something deeper, then, then it becomes really painful. And that's why getting help, asking for help, having someone who's walked the walk and seen things that you haven't seen and encounter the problems that you're about to encounter way before you do and can give you hand-holding to the process of navigating a successful relationship. That's why it's so important for those of you who have not found what you want to as much as I'm into self-help, as much as I'm into videos, as much as I'm into like doing whatever you can on your own, there comes a point which you can say, I can attempt to continue doing this shit on my own for the next 10 years, or I can get someone to help me and avoid 10 years of pain, get there faster and better and have the best quality of life I can have. It is a compromise, it is a sacrifice, and it's an investment, but it's an investment that's worth it for some of you. 
So I, I, I am, and I'm not saying this in a self-serving way. Yes, of course I help women find love. I only have a certain number of spots, however. So to give you an example, I reach 500,000 women roughly each month these days and growing. So I only have a certain number of spots. So I'm not saying, because there's more women listening to this than I could ever help. So if I'm not the best fit to help you, reach out to someone else, but crying out loud, reach out for help. If you feel like you've been attempting this thing through self-help, through videos, through your friend's advice, and you're not getting it, because it doesn't get any better until you, you have someone who shows you the way and who allows you to understand that there's principles at play that you're not seeing that can make this happen in a way that it hasn't before. Hope this is helpful, useful, insightful to you in some way. If it is, I'm gonna ask you to do three things. Number one, click like or thumbs up on this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel. Number three, uh, if you wanna go deeper, there's gonna be a couple of links in the description of this video. The first one is gonna be if you wanna work with me. If you feel like you want my help to get forward, please click on the first link in the description of this video and you can apply for, to figure out if we're fit to work together. If you're not ready to ask for help and you want some additional, um, an additional video that can help you understand what this relationship is all about, there's another link in the description of this video that will allow you to, to attend a masterclass that I put out for free. Thank you so much for connecting with me, my dear. I challenge you to live a full and conscious life and I challenge you to ask for help when you need it and not try to figure this thing all on your own. Thank you.